The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, which we are going through, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ controls history. In his history, the place where I do reside, in my country known as India. The freedom wherewith Lord has set us free so that we can have our own trends of religion to be practiced irrespective of their nation. We have been given the freedom through our Lord in Mahatma Gandhi the birthday of him which has been celebrated in this date of October 2nd of 2015 of the year of our Lord. This great man was a man who said and who followed the principles of Christianity a lot. At least today the leaders of this world should should really understand the leaders of my country, not the world. But he was a man, he never spoke lie. And we do know, when a man tells he never spoke lie, what it is as per the word of the Lord. But as a country leader, where they are enjoying the freedom today, where they are capable of understanding the word of the Lord in the privacy of our priesthood, and in the reality where we don't have any persecutions, Wherewith we are much thankful to the Lord for this great man. Wherewith today, when we are going through the ups and downs of our life, we as believers should understand when this man has told not to lie, as a believers and as a pastor teachers, constantly we are using our mouths to gossip, to wound, to hurt, to criticize and to condemn others, which reveals what kind of a person we are, but why it has to be in our lives. When an unbeliever who does not believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who bought freedom, who bought freedom to my country says, do not lie, then how much more true we need to be when we are calling ourselves as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, particularly to the trends of a pastor teacher whose duty is to rightly divide the word of truth and never compromise in rightly dividing the word of truth. What are our practices? What are our beliefs? What are our trends? How much are we really going through in our lives? And what it is that is happening around? And what it is that we aren't really happy to look around? in comparison to this great man who was an unbeliever. And we have a note in Warren, Warren Weisbury who writes a command about admonishing the leaders, he tells very clearly to the point of consideration that the missionary who thought about the truth to the people the missionary who pursued Gandhiji to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he came strictly to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to get baptized with him, he could find this missionary being with some other man by him. And he did not believe in our Lord because of that one man failure who was not able to control his lust. And you know what Gandhiji went to prove? Though he was sleeping naked with angles, 
He wanted to prove to our missionaries who are calling Christians that the lust pattern cannot reign over you. And this is what the failure of Christian pastors today, not only to control their roles in nature, not only to control their mouth, how they can represent themselves in my country like India to be a great man. If that Gandhiji, if would have been really believing in my Lord, it would have been a great thing to this church. But what has happened? No truth, no reality, no basis. That time it was that missionary who failed, and today, though we are having after 1947 so many years of independence, why Christianity is not more in India? Because the pastors have failed the duty to do properly. Not for the persecution that they can go through and tell that because of my Lord I am in jail, because of my Lord. No, because you are a foolish man not to be very wise enough in the scriptures. To witness by life, to witness by the points of considering to the words wherewith you and I have been called. We are not at all to the reality of the word. We are not at all to the reality of the power wherewith the Holy Scriptures can teach us the Bible doctrine. And why it is so happening in our lives? Because we don't have the true renovation of our thinking among our midst. And we are just capable of thinking those things wherewith we are more washed than those unbelievers who do not believe in the Lord. We just constantly plan evil no integrity of truth. So dear brethren, if we are always complaining, we probably are not thankful and do not focus on good and beautiful things as God commands to us in First Thessalonians 5.18 or Philippians 4.8. If we stretch the truth to cover up our mistakes, we may be unrepentant about our sin. And if we angrily broadcast on account of the wrong done to us by another, we have probably failed to forgive. Attempts at self-control over gossip, grumbling, or angry outbursts often fail because of the condition of our hearts. And we need to allow God to change our hearts. We need to have repentant hearts. After each transgression of the tongue, we need to examine our heart to determine the sinful attitude that produced it and then confess it. On the life of a point of missionary failed to be a witnessing of true one to Gandhiji. Today, the pastors are failing to represent the truth because they are not able to examine for each and every transgression of the word and the speaking contrary towards Bible doctrine. Not having knowledge of exegesis, not having knowledge of isagogics, not having knowledge of the dispensing technique of dispensations, not even having the knowledge of Bible doctrine for them to rightly divide the word of the law. And it's a great pain upon our heart that we could find not enough pastors who can tell this. If we fail to be grieved about our attitudes, we will inevitably fall back into the same old speech patterns. Love must be in our hearts. If we truly love other people, our words will be patient, kind, free from jealousy, humble, considerate, others-centered, truthful and protective. Our words will never go wrong. Are our words encouraging? Are our words truthful? Do they stir others to faith in and love of God? Or are they destructive and discouraging? We need to ask God's help, as David said, as a set guard of God over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips. Let us remember that God can change our words, but to accomplish that he needs to transform our heart. But what are we doing? We are not able to worry or concentrate. How much are we witnessing through our lives? And how much are we witnessing through our lives? The great failure for Gandhiji not to believe upon our lives purely because of that missionary. The great failure what we are representing today even after our independence of so many days is that we don't have the witnessing of our wisdom in our knowledge of Christ. We don't tackle them as the way the Bible demands. And we are not aware of the truth that our lips should speak. 
Dear brethren, ponder over these things. Think. Because it is a great day, the great birthday for our freedom countryman who came through Gandhiji. And it is a great day that he said, do not lie. And how much are we going through our lips with lying that you need to consider. So dear brethren, in the next year we shall continue our discourse. But which way you want to go, you decide. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou was given to fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask in question, Father. Amen.